He stopped the boat and went to look for him. They found him all right, with his arm caught under the belt and pulled from the shoulder, and he was bleeding to death. Now, lads, modern mining means big, powerful machines, and you are going to be taught how to handle these machines properly and safely. But before you start, I want you all to remember this. Treat all machines with respect. Start taking liberties with any machine, and sooner or later, it will get you. Now, don't forget, treat all, all machines with respect. Now be careful around here, there's a lot of traffic. <laughs> You warned the lads about moving traffic outside. What about telling them about the rolling stock inside? Good idea. Now, lads, the main point to remember when working near rolling stock is never stand or walk between the rails. Never have any part of your body between the rails, not even your hands. All the time, always work facing the oncoming traffic so that you can see what's coming, even if you can't hear it on account of the noise. Another cause of accidents is that sometimes a man will take unnecessary risks in order to avoid a hole up in production. For instance, there was a man who used to work this tipper some years ago. A mine car got jammed in the tipper, wouldn't come out. Instead of stopping the job and using the correct equipment installed to pull the mine car out, he thought it would save time by fixing a stang between the jammed mine car and the full car waiting to run into the tippler. The idea was to push the empty mine car, which was jammed, out of the tippler. He was fitting the stang in position. The stang slipped. The full mine car came running into the tippler. And he was trapped between the mine car and tippler structure. Men will do stupid things sometimes to keep the coal moving. But remember, you're not paid to take risks. Right, let's go to it just now. the right way to get yourself shout. I can wear me hair as long as I like, can't I? Does that pose to mean anything to you? That could happen to you too, if you don't wear the hair next. Well, where can I get an hair next? You go down to the sailing office. They'll give you one. Never look directly at a blue flame, except through a proper eye shield. It could damage your eyes, even at a distance. What's he done, Jim? He 
opportunity, he had a rush of one, so he started grinding without his goggles on. Well, you better get him to the medical centre straight well, away. This is where I'm taking him now. A rush job, as if two or three seconds to put goggles on would have made all that difference. Not really. You see all these ragged edges here? If that was to be hit with a hammer, it could shoot off like a bullet and maybe hit someone. Can I have it then? You can have it if you want it. Thanks. Broken tools are dangerous. Scrap them. Now, can any of you lads remember what the safety engineer told you about untidiness? Untidiness causes accidents. Colin. Sometimes to other people. Well, if we can all remember just that, it would save a lot of accidents happening. Now, you see those wagons over there? That reminds me of an accident which happened right here. Do you remember that one, Walter? Oh, yes, yes. One evening, about four years ago, the gangers were sent to do some repairs to the track. When they finished, they went off the job, leaving some bits of old debris alongside the track. Next morning, the shunter started work as usual. He hadn't been working more than half an hour when he caught his foot against a bit of this muck, tripped, and fell. <coughs> If you had been one of those gangers and the coroner at the inquest had told you that your untidiness had caused that man's death, how would you feel about it? So you see, we know from experience that untidiness has caused accidents. I would like to thank the safety engineer for showing us some of these daily problems. Oh, I think this is quite useful. We ought to do this more often. But don't think these accidents I've been telling you about happen every day. Far from it. But they do happen occasionally, and only because people will continue to take unnecessary risks. Now, lads, are there any questions you'd like to ask the safety engineer? What are the most common kind of accidents? Most of the minor accidents are due to stumbling, slipping and falling. But you've already seen some of the other causes as well. Which part of the body gets damaged most? By far and away the hand. And this is bad in many ways because if your fingers or hands get damaged badly, you could lose your skill as a craftsman. You said that rushing around and untidiness causes accidents. Uh, what else causes accidents? Oh, there are lots of causes. Some obvious, some not so obvious. Depends on how far you want to dig down. How do you mean, dig down? Well, let's take the case of lads like yourself, larking about. Now, not so long ago, we had four young lads working here. They had finished the 20 days under close personal supervision. One day, they were instructed to help on a rush job in the stockyard. Urgent, right? So they worked hard and fast and finished the job in no time.
Then they stood around and waited to be given another job to do. Half an hour went by, then an hour. And the lads were still waiting. Then they began larking about. And the larking started getting a bit rough. <laughs> He was off work for about a month with concussion and about 14 stitches in his hand. I had to attend the inquiry, but I wasn't altogether satisfied with the conclusions marking about. I knew the lad who tripped up his mate and caused the accident was rather quiet and not given to horseplay like the other two lads. We started lurking about and wrestling, and I tripped David, and he hit his head. So, after the inquiry, I thought I'd ask him not who, but what started it off. Ian, can you tell me? Never mind who started the trouble, but what really started it? Oh, we just got bored standing around with us to do. And we started larking about with each other. Bored, standing around, nothing to do. Easy enough to tell a strip off a lad for larking about. But who really was to blame? Well, I think the young foreman should have kept the lads more fully occupied. Maybe. But really, he taught us all a lesson. That if you leave a bunch of young lads standing around getting bored with nothing to do, then sooner or later, they'll be up to some kind of mischief that could lead to an accident. Now, can you remember some of the things the safety engineer told you about accident prevention? Well, don't rush around. Untidiness, no loose clothing. Don't rush off without first leaving things safe for other people. Treat all machines with respect. Hmm, that's not so bad. And how do we keep you young lads out of trouble? By not getting bored. <laughs> now, all joking apart, if you remember those few things when you're working on the surface or underground, it's going to make a tremendous difference all round. Because safety is not just my job. Safety is everybody's business. If everybody makes safety their business, you'll be out of a job. <laughs> That's one risk I'm quite prepared to take. <laughs> Make safety your target. Oh, Rose. Always buttoned up. Love. Hair. Your suitcase. No clothes.